So, today's lecture will be on drilling. So, there are two aspects of drilling, one is from fixed platform, the later on we will study about floating platforms. So, from fixed platforms, these are the uh, vessels which are jam basically jack up rigs. <coughs> then you have uh, submersibles, uh, of course, submersibles are not much of use in uh, nowadays. Submersibles, submersibles basically have two hulls, one above the water level and the other on the seabed. So, this you remember. So, these are the precursors of our semi sub. So, that means the bottom hull actually rests on the seabed and here you have the wave. So, this is called a submersible. So, submersibles were used in the 1940s uh, in shallow water. So, water depth is around say 12 meters. So, this is your pontoon, pontoon and deck. So, this is called a submersible. So, these are of not much use in nowadays, still in marshy waters, marshy uh, areas you can find these type of stru structures. Oh. Now, so these are called submersibles and the last category of course, that I have talked about is your jacket platforms. So, these are called jackets. Now, jackets are essentially guide for your piles and they are fixed coastal structures. Now, this uh, drilling, the main purpose of drilling is set up conductor pipe. This is a set up conductor pipe. So, this is your prime motivation and this is a large diameter pipe. This is a large diameter pipe driven by pile driver. So, this you must have noticed when the, um, the piling work is carried out from for uh, buildings. Now, this conductor pipe extends from above the water line, extends above the water line to slightly below seabed. So, this is the extent of your conductor pipe. Now, this, this is a very uh, important pipe which transports your oil from the oil well that is down below to your platform. So, sometimes this is also called a marine riser. This is also called a marine riser. Now, the function is to primary function of a what is your conductor pipe is to guide drill pipe. And prevent <coughs> collapse of borehole. So, this is these are the functions why you have a conductor pipe, prevent collapse of borehole. Now, the process of drilling you can see from this diagram, this uh, now the process is more or less the same whether it is from a fixed platform or from a floating platform. So, here I have a diagram and you can see the drilling. So, this is your drill pipe. So, that means, so the, here actually the uh, drilling from a semi submersible is in uh, is going on. Uh, these are the various components. Now, here you will find uh, 
uh, this is your marine riser or conductor pipe which I was talking about. So, this actually is uh, while you, you are drilling now through this your drill, <coughs> drill string comes out. Here you can see this is your drill bit and this is connected to another pipe. Now, this pipe is hollow for mud circulation and this pipe actually comes in 30 feet sections and there is it is screwed at various lengths. So, this is called a drill collar and the whole thing from the top to bottom it is called a drill string. So, when uh, in the drilling you come across this word drill string that means um, it, uh, it consists of your drill bit, drill collar and drill pipe. Now, this actually your drill string which I will uh, talk about it is suspended from the uh, derrick. So, this is your drilling derrick and it is actually suspended from pulleys here is called the crown block. So, here it is suspended via a swivel. Now, swivel is there such as the drill, drill bit that the whole drill string can rotate. So, this is actually a joint universal sort of joint. Now, here you will find a kelly, kelly is a square piece of rod. Now, that there are two things which one has to do suppose you are driving a screw into a wall. So, what you are doing you are basically we are applying two forces one a horizontal or a vertical force and the other is a torque. So, similarly here also if one wants to drill a hole say a bore hole is being drilled. So, you have to put a vertical pressure on the drill string otherwise it would not go down and also you have to put a rotary torque. Now, this vertical pressure on the drill bit is actually your weight of the drill string. So, drill string will actually weigh a few hundred tons okay. and suppose what is done. So, normally you will find suppose uh, it is uh, underweight that means if you want to increase the weight. So, what you do you increase the number of collars drill collars or here you can put additional weights on the drill string in order to uh, put vertical pressure here such that it goes down and the torque is actually given by this uh, rotary table. So, rotary table is given a uh, it goes round uh, and round and this is actually um, it mates with the carry. Now, you, you can see in this diagram that if you want to have a torque that means you have to give. So, if you look at the plan view on the of the rotary table you will find there is a circular disc, circular disc with a square hole. So, this is your rotary table and here you will find a square hole for insertion of the KD. So, KD actually goes down through this square hole. So, this is your KD and this rotary table is given a torque. So, this is the direction of rotation of your rotary table. So, the reason is you have to give torque to the carry, carry is rotated that is why it is on a square hole. If you make this round then the grip will be only the friction grip, but here actually there is no chance of slippage. So, that is why it is given a square hole. Now, you can see in the process of drilling as the rotary table is rotated. So, the whole drill string actually goes down that means the bore hole goes deeper and deeper and uh, mm, the one length of carry. So, that means the drill pipes actually come in 30 feet lengths. So, one length of pipe is going to go down. So, that means it will also drag the carry this joint will come here. So, it will come down here. Now, after the whole length of carry has gone down you have to the whole drill string is taken up. So, that is why this is actually hung from the pulleys. This is actually there uh, here what is called draw works. So, what is not shown here this pulley number pulleys is connected to your draw works by means of wire ropes. So, that means it is hoisted after one length of drill pipe goes down the whole drill string is hoisted such that it reveals the joint of the KD with the drill pipe. So, KD if you see 
the k d is a square piece of rod. So, something like this. Uh, so, that is joined to your rotary table. Now, this joint actually is removed, is opened up. So, and, and another section of drill pipe is joined to the top of the uh, pipe. You remove the carry and you join another piece of drill drill pipe with the top of this, uh, this thing, drill string. And then again you connect your carry and again it will go down. But your carry will come here because you have added another piece of pipe length. So, then again the whole drilling process is continued. So, like this there is a continuous unscrewing of the carry and addition of drill pipe goes on. Now, so far so good. Now, now what is done actually? Now, there are two things is uh, the drill bit you will find uh, there are a number of uh, I will talk in the this thing in the uh, um, notes. The drill bit is has a um, number of variations in order to drill for hard soil, soft soil. So, after a few hours of drilling you you will find that the drill bit gets worn out. So, then again you have to take out the whole drill string, unscrew the bit and again uh, screw another uh, bit and again you continue the process of drilling. So, this is a very tedious task and uh, the, the whole point is that uh, uh, this borehole you can see there are number of casings. Now, casings in the here actually it has been shown in the large scale actually this should fit within the diameter of the marine riser. You know, so, this, uh, these casings you will find this is actually a, um, uh, this is a floating platform or a semi submersible. Now, in a semi submersible actually you will have the uh, blowout preventer at the seabed. So, this is called a well head assembly. So, these casings what you are seeing out here it is actually suspended from a well head assembly. So, here you will find number of casings being suspended and this is your borehole is going to have this kind of configuration. So, uh, you will find here uh, in this diagram that is the first casing or the conductor pipe is larger in diameter because you have made the whole size at first what is made the hole is made shallow and wide and then your first casing is inserted. So, you can see the first casing the diameter is quite big. Okay. So, now you go on drilling as you go on progressive drilling you see as you drill, drill a hole on the wall progressively the diameters keep on decreasing and you have to insert the uh, more number of casings. So, the first casing comes out here. Now, inside that you insert, uh, you insert another pipe which is called a second casing. So, these are actually strings. Strings means of, of course, from the seabed to the top of the platform you cannot have a one single pipe, but you will have number of pipes which are screwed one to another you know. So, that is why it is called a string. So, like this you insert number of casings as the hole gets progressively deeper. Now, after a certain length in this diagram, you can see that you can no longer insert any more casings, but you can see the nature of the borehole has narrowed down from the seabed to down below. So, the this depth can be very high, it can be as large as say 3 to 4 kilometers in depth. So, here that means you do not have any more casings. So, you can see the uh, drill string along with the drill bit is uh, boring a narrow hole. Now, what happens is that as you are drilling there is a tendency for this mud or blow hole or uh, bore hole this is called bore hole collapse. Now, if this happens a bore hole collapse is that means, the bore hole the mud from the bore hole actually um, comes and blocks the whole uh, uh, this bore hole. So, this bore hole actually becomes flooded with mud. So, 
So, that means you have not what is called stabilized the hole. So, because you are drilling so deep say 3 kilometers, 4 kilometers, there is a tendency of this mud to come and choke the hole of the bore hole. So, if that happens then your drilling is going to stop. You can, neither you can remove this drill bit or you can turn the drill string. So, that is a, that, uh, that means the whole process of drilling has to stop and you have to abandon this hole is gone. So, in order to prevent that what you do? You give a counter pressure. Now, here actually all bore holes have to be maintained at a certain pressure you know that is called bore hole pressure so which is very important and that also has to be monitored. So, prevent this bore hole collapse, maintain bore hole pressure Now, as the drilling actually um, goes on into the deeper and deeper it down below into the reservoir, now pressure is in, uh, encountered. Now, pressure will come from the, the first year of the hydrostatic head, then the mud. You see, uh, this thing you are always familiar that is uh, what is your pressure? P is equals to the hydrostatic pressure hydrostatic pressure is rho g h and the earth pressure that it will come across. So, p earth you can write the uh, specific gravity of the soil multiplied by h. Earth is also going to exert pressure you know on the sides just like as your water is exerting pressure. So, these pressures we have to combine. So, a huge amount of pressure is going to come on the borehole out here. So, how to how to prevent collapse is you have to maintain a internal pressure inside the drill stream. So, that is actually affected by what is called internal pressure is maintained by mud circulation. So, internal pressure in borehole maintained by mud circulation. Now, this mud is actually uh, not the clay that you can see in the soil, but this has mud plus chemicals added to it. Now, this chemicals for required viscosity. So, a certain amount of viscosity has to be maintained in the borehole because the flow rate, flow has to be maintained for the mud. You know, so, you add certain chemicals. So, so this uh, the mud is actually doing required viscosity maintains fluid pressure. maintains fluid pressure in borehole. This is very important. Now, as you go deeper down inside the your uh, uh, the earth, you will encounter more and more pressure. So, that means, your mud pressure has to be increased, is not it? So, you have to counter the pressure coming from the soil and from this region by your pressure that is inner pressure from the mud. So, the, the main problem that uh, out here is I told you in case of gravity platforms and any platforms in deep water always balance pressure. This pressure balancing has to be done at any cost otherwise you are asking for trouble, the whole structure will collapse if the external pressure is 
very large compared to your internal pressure. Balance pressure in boreholes, offshore structure, etc. So, this is the problem that you will come across for large water depths. Anyway, so this is, uh, this is normally this mud circulation is done. I will give you the, the sequence of your mud circulation. So, mud actually keeps on circulating through your carry drill string. Now, it, it comes outside uh, through the drill string outside the bit and here you can see there is a gap between the hole and the drill string. So, the mud, mud actually flows out through this gap and it comes to the surface. So, you can see the annular space between the casing and the string. Through this narrow space, it is led up into the, this is, there is a mud pump and a reservoir out here. So, that keeps on circulating the mud. So, while you are doing the drilling operation, you are always to supply a mud in order that the reason is, you have to maintain the pressure inside the borehole and also you have to lubricate the bit, otherwise your bit will become worn out in just one or two hours. So, this is the function of your mud circulation and here it has not been now the, the other, other uh, things are not being shown is your one thing you can see this is your drill floor of the semi submersible, here you have the shale shaker, shale is nothing but broken pieces of rock. So, those have to be separated from the mud because when the mud is being lifted up along with the suction your rocks and uh, other uh, uh, impurities are going to be sucked up. So, those again have to be separated by the shale shaker and again mud is being uh, driven down. So, here you have shale shaker, there will be a pump, there will be a mud ditch and all this paraphernalia will go on on the drill floor of the platform. So, when you are designing a platform, that means the deck has to actually house all those equipments and not only that, you have to stack large lengths of the drill pipe. So, those are stacked on the deck. So, you have to have deck area requirement when you calculate. So, in your the not in this class, but in, in offshore technology class, what I will come uh, talk about those are called top sides. So, in offshore engineering frequently you will come across this term top sides. So, all these equipments etcetera they are laid out on the deck and you have to have space proper layout of those spacing is required. So, those are those are called top sides layout. So, this is actually a very uh, important in your uh, platform design because platform sorry platform design is actually centered around these top sides. Top sides facility or you can write facility. Now, top side facility is going to vary whether you are you are going out for this is exploratory drilling. Now, there are two types of drilling you will come across. One is called exploratory drilling, which are the last class I talked about that is called exploratory drilling. And the other is called production. Uh, production of course, you do not have drilling, but you just simply take out the oil from the reservoir. So, there are two basic different types of platforms. So, when you go to offshore, you will come across all these uh, terms. So, different types of platforms, one is for production and the other is for exploratory drilling. So, this uh, uh, is to be noted. Now, what you are doing here is exploratory drilling. 
So, you know, now here you can see this is a floating platform. The other important uh, equipment that you out here, so all those pumps, etc., and everything, they are laid out on the deck. So, those are called the top sides. Now, top sides, uh, they not only consist of all your equipment, smart pumps, etc., but there will be deck house, which is not shown here. Your um, uh, this thing, helicopter, flare stack, and all these things will come. So, the uh, arrangement of all these top side facilities is very important for your uh, design of the platform. So, this actually decides on what is called this is your deck design. So, um, your platform is basically a deck loading or a deck designed uh, vessel, is not it? Unlike your ships, ships are what? Ships are actually meant for carrying cargo inside their hold, but uh, here actually when you come for the uh, concept of design, you have to start out from your design of top sides. Now, this is also very tricky because these top sides if you want to design, then the, um, you have to have uh, the nature and the size of these equipments, the weight, area, volume, of course, you know, volumes are not very critical because you can go to height because it is not uh, your uh, the ship, you will find it is all the equipments are within an enclosed space, but here actually you get some kind of freedom. But here if you want to distribute, uh, suppose the distance between all your equipments you lay out and you find that you are not able to accommodate all the equipments on one deck, then you have to go for number of decks. Okay. And also, the you can see the distance between the um, pontoons, they are also dictated by the area of the deck, deck area requirement. So, there are three things, one is you can see these are called the uh, underwater portion and these are called your top size, the underwater portion actually the underwater truss supports the top sides and what, is, what else does it do and also it raises your environmental loads that are coming from the water that is your waves, current etcetera that is taken care of by the underwater truss. Uh, so, in design actually um, these are two things which are of prime importance. So, you have to design two separate things, one is your top sides that is your GA drawing and the underwater truss. The underwater truss is more of the structural design category and here also this is being supported by a deck that is called the what? You will come across these are typical terms, this is called deck top sides which I have just now talked about, the other was called deck substructure. So, this is supporting supports your top sides actually. So, these, these are some of the common talk you will find or parlance that comes here. The here of course, the, the other things are not shown here. So, in this case, this is coming from the floating platform. Now, in the fixed platform, you will find that this BOP instead of being located on the seabed, it is located on the deck of the platform. So, that is the major difference. So, fixed platform will have less motions and e easy maintenance of BOP stack because you can readily access from the deck. But here actually, you see blood preventer assembly is on the seabed. So, if you want to control the BOP, BOP is nothing but a set of valves which you have to regulate because you have to regulate the pressure inside the borehole. This actually regulates the pressure on the borehole. So, as you go deeper down, there will be huge pressure coming from the oil reservoir. And if you are unable, the if the pressure inside the drill that is in your drill string and your blowhole is less, then there what is called the rig will suffer what is called a blowout. 
a blowout occurs when there is excessive pressure inside the borehole and you are not able to maintain pressure. That means, uh, the driller is uh, has surrendered himself to nature, you know. So, the whole thing gets uprooted, it is blown out along with the rigs, it, uh, the whole thing is blown out and it might catch fire also. So, that is called a blowout. So, recently one blowout has had occurred in the Gulf of Mexico and so you can see the havoc that has been caused. That havoc was caused because of this blowout preventer. This blowout preventer, the pressure, you, there is a certain pressure you have to maintain. As now BOP you will find, you just cannot design a BOP. BOP minimum pressure minimum pressure is dictated is given by codes now the british petroleum in gulf of mexico they knew that this blowout is going to happen and they kept it a secret because their bop was unable to withstand that pressure it was not designed for gulf of mexico pressure so that led to the disaster, you know. So, um, this is the uh, function of a blowout. Now, this blowout actually you have to operate in the case of uh, floating platforms, these you can see guidelines. So, these are for lowering equipments from the deck and also through these guidelines you can operate remote operation of BOP. So, in case of floating platforms, the Floating platforms necessarily should have remote operation of BOP. Remote operation of BOP, this is a must because it is a few hundreds of meters down below the uh, sea surface. So, this is one aspect in, in your drilling or uh, this is a major difference between drilling from a fixed platform and drilling from a uh, floating platform. Now, uh, for the mud circulation I just now talked about here is the sequence uh, for your mud circulation. So, you have to have all these equipments sequence of mud circulation. Yeah, sequence of mud circulation first you have the mud pump. Now, from this the mud goes to a swivel. Now, here actually what is not shown here you can see the swivel. So, I told you there is a gap or a hole right through the kelly along with the drill string and out from the drill collar. Now, here how you have, you have to pour mud actually from this region. So, what is done here from the mud pump the it goes through a pipe to this swivel. Swivel has holes where you can insert your pipe. Now, the year to lead the mud pump through here and out from the drill stream. So, this is the this is a swivel, then it goes to a, the drill stream. Then drill collars. Actually, I am continuing the loop, so I am writing like this. So, your drill collars will come somewhere here, then drill bit, then out through the annular space. Annular space is, it is coming from the drill bit and out through here this is called the annular space. Then 
then it comes to a shale shaker. You can shale the uh, pieces of rocks which have to be sieved out. <coughs> so, this is your shale shaker. And after that, it comes to a desander. That is, you remove the sand. Then it goes to a degasser. And after this degasser, it comes again to what is called a mud ditch. And then again goes to the mud pump. So, the full cycle stops here. So, this is the mud circulation and you can see so many uh, equipments and so much there is a mud ditch also that means you have to have a reservoir for collecting the mud. So, this uh, all this is laid out on the deck only uh, shale shaker has been thrown out here. So, this process actually goes out here and the next is your blowout preventer which I have already talked about. Then the a blowout preventer is a name which given to a set of valves. Set of valves to control pressure. Now, this actually closes around drill string, closes around drill string, closes around drill string while drilling. And around bore hole. around bore hole when drilling is stopped, when drilling is stopped. Now, when drilling is over then what you do? That means, you have to go for production. So, after drilling Now, there are certain terms which you will find unique when you come for offshore drilling. After drilling, it is replaced by a production Christmas tree. So, this is to be noted a production Christmas tree. A Christmas tree as you have already know, it looks like this, is not it? That means, a set of valves progressively that is you are decreasing this pressure in stages from here to here. So, obviously, the sizes of the valves will go down, because you have lesser pressure as you go from bottom to up, is not it? So, this is called a Christmas tree. So, this you will find. Now, uh, here I, I just talked about the process of drilling and uh, the afloat condition actually, uh, there are a number of points which you have to uh, remember. So, the first one uh, which I was talking about is uh, drilling in the from fixed platform, is not it? So, I started my talk about drilling from now drilling from floating platforms. Now, this uh, uh, diagram you will see, I think this is taken from the Taggart's book. 
here uh, this is upside down. So, here on the left, left side you will find this is drilling from a fixed platform, the right hand side is actually it is not shown here. In this diagram I have shown the drilling from a floating platform. Now, here you can see the drilling from a fixed platform and uh, you can see the bit hole. Of course, there is only one casing, you can see this is your surface casing and the, the dark portion that you see is the cement. So, the cement has been grouted in order to stabilize the hole. So, the whole mud is coming out from the drill string and going from this and to the, you can see the BOP stack is above the seabed, uh, above the water level. This is called the cellar deck of the platform, they have the BOP out here. So, this is your conductor pipe. Now, here the problem in the fixed platform is less because the conductor pipe will have less motion and your BOP assembly is on the deck. So, that is a major advantage. Now, as float is drilling from floating platforms is more difficult actually. Why? First is BOP on seabed. So, this you remember that is in the floating platform BOP is on seabed and this actually entails remote operation. remote operation of BOP. And the next major technological challenge is motions, motions on marine riser. This is where you as naval architect, you have to <coughs> reduce motions. So, this is a major problem for naval architects. So, how you are going to reduce riser motion? motions are inevitable, is not it, for floating platforms. So, one thing you can do is design platform, design floating platforms to have less motions. So, that, this is why the TFP concept has come from this, design floating platforms to have less motions. Uh, this is not easy. One is the platform of the floater itself has to be designed to have less motions. The most critical motion is what? Critical is heave. The heave at any cost has to be restricted because that will give that will give your the alternate tension and compression on the drill stream. So, this has to be registered by a mechanism which is called a heave compensating device. A heave compensating in all cases of floating platforms, whether it be a drill ship or a semi submersible, you will find a heave compensating device. So, this is a tensioning device on the drill string, this is actually a tensioning mechanism on drill string. Now, this has to be maintained.
if you do not maintain tension then what will happen? Your whole drink string is going to collapse that is there will be a bending failure. So, drill string has to be kept taut otherwise it will get a curvature like this. Now, if this distance <coughs> is too much it may lead to bending failure on the drill on the marine riser. So, riser mechanics so for the naval architects <coughs> they have to study this platform motions riser motions. So, first you have to study platform motions sorry next you have to study riser motions. Now, this is actually a very separate study in itself this has led to another branch of study which is called riser mechanics. So, those of you who are going into research and all these things you come across all your offshore engineering firms they are all into this platform motions and riser, riser motions. So, the all these two motions have to be limited. Now, here actually you will find they are not independent of each other, but you have what is called coupled motions. So, the more complicated is not it. So, coupled motions with the platform and the riser are going to take place. So, here the problems are coming and also risers you will have find there is what is called eddy shading or the vibrations are very large vibratory motions. This is called because of a phenomena which is called vortex shading. So, this is another important area of study. So, naval architects they are mainly concerned about these two for floating platform motions, riser motions. The others the normally naval architecture is before that stability platform stability you have already done ship stability. So, those are have to be stability, stability and buoyancy consideration. buoyancy considerations of platform. So, these are no, normal that is your ships, ship stability and buoyancy the G z curve G m and all these things are going to come out here more important is this. So, motion restriction you can do by a heave compensating device. So, what else can you do? Motion restriction. Motion restrictions on platforms. to be done. So, heave compensating device what other thing can you do? Number 2 is mooring stiffness. So, in uh, cases of floating platforms whether I think a TLP I have already discussed that is the TLP is actually moved by tethers vertical tethers to the seabed semi submersibles will have 
what is called a ship drill ships and semi submersibles they have a spread moving system they are called these are discussed after your mid sem exam they are called a spread moving system so these the, these are very important first you have to restrict motion on the riser and then you have to restrict motion on the platform by a effective mooring system so moorings are very very important in case of floating floating platform you will find a mooring cable of length say 8 kilometers for water depth of say around say uh say uh, 2 kilometers or less than 1 kilometer water depth so mooring constitutes a large volume of your platform because you have to store all the mooring chains from the platform itself uh semi submersible columns they are stored and also you have to keep these moorings in tension so those are particularly important in case of platform design so platform designs are centered around, uh, around so many things first i talked about your top side facilities your top side layout then of course the on, uh, underwater part which takes care of your wave loads then this platforms are also designed for a su suitable mooring that is a mooring system what kind of mooring you are going to give to the platform so moorings actually contribute to a large portion of cost now moorings you will find this is a separate area of study moorings are actually consists of the what are the components of ship mooring first is your anchors so in case of floating platforms you will find large gravity anchors which are connected to chain cables or anchor chains anchor chains chain cables kept taut kept taut from mooring winches i don't know in ship design you will come across all these terms if not i will give you some notes on this how to design all this because in ships also you will come across mooring cables mooring winches what else is required anchors chain cables mooring winches and the other things that will come is number 3 is a feedback and control mechanism which is called a directional positioning system so these are some of the these are the <coughs> major factors of a mooring system in a ship now say you know this is your drill ship a drill ship normally has all these systems now a drill ship or a semi submersible you will find the moorings actually come from a hole in the ship which is called a moon pool so these are typical terms in offshore engineering from which the drill string comes out so here actually you will find your drilling derrick okay from which your drill string comes out drill string comes out from here now the whole ship actually rotates on the moon pool so here also you can have anchor chains mooring anchors large gravity anchors will come out here 
moon pool with what is called turret mooring. And this uh, actually after your mid I will talk about. So, this will come turret mooring is normally in offshore engineering you will come across this turret mooring about which the vessel rotates. So, vessel will always have freedom to rotate about its mooring system. So, the mooring system is <coughs> very costly it, it takes up around 50 percent of the cost of a floating platform. The next most important is the marine riser. So, moorings and marine risers constitute a large proportion of the cost of a platform. So, next class uh, at 10 30 we meet tomorrow I will try to finish this. Uh, there is a diagram uh, of the marine riser which has uh, which is a little bit different from your fixed riser. So, tomorrow I will give that and I will give you some notes on the current and the uh, wind. Okay, thank you very much.